Hey there everyone, welcome to Freedom and thanks for spending part of your weekend with us. We've got a lot going on around our church, so we wanted to take a few minutes and tell you about some things coming up for you and your family. So check this out. Our Kid Zone ministry will be hosting a TNT fireworks tent in the Walmart parking lot in Martinsville, Virginia this summer. All proceeds will go to their ministry. Please remember them when looking for any festive firework needs this 4th of July. Would you like to serve and help in the tent? Please contact Jeremy Collins at 276-806-0113. We will also start collecting any red, white, and blue items you have to donate and waste baskets. Do you have any of these items that you can give that will help us decorate this tent? We need a lot. Please bring them in starting next Sunday and leave them in the collection bins in the lobby. Thank you. Want to be more than an attender here at Freedom and want to join our church family? Our next new members class is Sunday, May 20th at 4.30 p.m. Brochures for more information and to sign up are in the lobby today. Check it out. Mother's Day is just two weeks away. Happy Mother's Day, moms. Moms, if you are having a baby or a child and you want them to be dedicated to our Lord on Mother's Day, May 13th, please see one of our nursery volunteers. They have more information and sign-ups. The annual mother-daughter-friend-neighbor luncheon is Saturday, May 12th at 11.30 a.m. Are you strong, swaying, falling, blooming? Well, this time will be just right for you, ladies. Mark your calendars and it's all free. Our Want a Year End Celebration service is Sunday, May 6th at 6 p.m. with an ice cream social afterwards. Come see all the work the Lord has done through our volunteers and clubbers. Well, it's sad to see it go, but this is our last weekend of collecting helpful items for foster children in our community. Thank you to everyone who has given. Please go through your closet for clothes, your kids' closet, and check out the list and see how you can help by this evening. And you can bring any of your donations in to the collection bins that are located in the lobby or by the church office. Mom to Mom meets the second Tuesday of every month. Their next meeting is Tuesday, May 8th at 7 p.m. Join them in the resource room out front. Free child care and refreshments are available. And for more information, contact Charity Havens at 276-340-2173. Faith and Fitness meets Mondays at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. This is for ladies only, please, and it's every Monday. For more info, contact Karen Wilson at 276-732-5370. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We believe you're here for a reason. God has something he wants to say specifically to you where you're at. 
And our hope is that you leave encouraged and closer to God than ever before. We are praying for you. And please let us know if we can help you in any way while you are here with us today. And be sure to connect with us at freedombaptistchurch.com and on our social media to stay up to date with everything happening here at Freedom. We hope you have a great weekend. And thanks again for joining us. Five years ago, if you'd have told me I'd be sitting here, you know, telling my story of, of salvation, I, I would have laughed right in your face, and I would have told you you're a crazy Christian. I didn't believe there was hope. I didn't believe in true love. Five years ago, I didn't even believe in myself. I heard people use the term atheist, and when I decided I knew what that meant, it just was kind of stuck in the back of my mind. Like, I think that's where I fit better than anything. It was more just, there's no such thing as God. Like. If God really cares about people, like all these people say he does, he wouldn't let children starve and cities burn down, and he wouldn't let people get into situations where they, where they hurt each other. I just thought Christians were meddlers, and they took away the rights of people, and they were just trying to create this new world order. I, I really viewed Christians as evil. I became really combative. Like, I'm not going to let them get away with this. This is a fairy tale. This is crap. Like, they cannot just come and fill people's heads with this fantasy. I faced life feeling like every day should be awesome and it should be fun, but I did that with drinking and drugs and boyfriends. And if I died, I just, I was buried. That was, that was all I really believed. I met my best friend who happened to be a Christian through a past relationship. She was the first friend that really started to talk about Christianity in a different way to me. I remember she had, she took the, her jacket off and she had this shirt on with bright pink lettering that said, Jesus is my homeboy. I was like, is that, isn't that blasphemous? <laughs> Can you really say that? And she just lived it. I mean, that was about the closest I had seen to someone really just demonstrating a love for Christ rather than just duty to him. And man, I just remember thinking like, how am I ever gonna be friends with her? If, if we're so divided on these things. I mean, we had debates, we had heated debates. I really let her have it. I was like, that is the most crazy hogwash I've ever heard. And because I knew her personally, I felt like she really did have my best in mind, that she wanted to break through those hard things with me. And in that time, I met a really awesome guy and we got close, but, uh, probably a little too close because um, I got pregnant only a few months after we met. I decided um, I gotta get rid of this problem. I went to a clinic and heard any of the options I had. And that was where a lot started to change. There was this picture this woman handed me and it was just a dot, but she explained to me that that was a, a baby. I just started to wonder like how on earth that was gonna become a life. You know, this had to be something bigger than me. Up until then, I had been so snarky to Christians, but I started to lean in a little more and wonder if maybe what they were saying was true. My best friend had approached me. She basically said, I, I understand you're really struggling for answers right now. She says, I just want to tell you, like, what if you just gave Christianity a try? She says, because I go to church and I pray and you'll never know until you know, but I can tell you there are answers. And she says, if you just gave it one month, you know, just come to church and then you can just say at least you tried. I realized she cares more about this faith than, than being a popular friend right now. That said a lot, because we had been through a lot. For some reason, it just felt like if I could just go, maybe I'll hear something, or at least I can just be alone for a little bit and think I hid myself up in the balcony and I actually owned a Bible from all my years of trying to disprove. And the worship team uh, performed Canons by Phil Wickham. There were certain words I vividly, you know, remember reading them on the screen for the first time and just thinking, wow, that's, that's what I feel. You know, having been an atheist and, and believing in science, to, to read the moon and the stars declare who you are, it took me away from that happenstance and it, it put me in the position that just like I was created and my baby was created, you know, th this whole world, this whole universe was created and they all proclaim what, what a power he is. And on a personal level, you know, it's, it says, I'm so unworthy, but still you love me. For me, this didn't make any sense. You know, he can redeem good people, you know, people who've made little mistakes and messed up and didn't say their these and thous or something like that. He doesn't redeem women who are pregnant out of wedlock, who have a path of emotional carnage behind them. And uh, this song was just reminding me, you know, even if you're unworthy, he loves you. You know, we're all unworthy. You know, that's the beauty about grace. It's, 
it's a gift. You, you don't get to pick and choose who gets it. You know, you just accept it. And it was after that song and a really powerful message, I finally accepted Christ. Um, but I remember just sitting there because it wasn't so easy. Because, I mean, it was almost like I felt bad for him to have to take on everything I lived. It's like I felt bad that Jesus <laughs> had to own, like me. And I just remember holding my belly and holding my breath and I just said, are you sure that you want to save this one? Are you sure? I mean, I called him names. I laughed behind his back. I mocked him in public and I realized I'm no different than all those people that were right in front of him, you know, as he bled. And if he went for them, you know, he, he went for me too. You know, it's, it's a struggle to believe every single day that um, Jesus really did die for me. And um, when someone challenges what I believe now, I, I remember being that person. I remember taking any opportunity I had to just stick it to the Christian. But now, I mean, my faith is so big. It's, it's like, I know where you've been. I, I know that feeling. And I, I promise if you give me just a few minutes, you know, I'll talk about it with you. I try to just get them one step closer, one question closer. As much as I know about what it's done for me, it's worth a shot to try to get them to come over to.